this talk in several places in Taiwan. So if you have listened to it, please take care of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a work done with my student, Zhang Junpa. Data. 
So if you consider the bottom, bottom, bottom different data, you can see that the, the lambda is about 1, mu about 0, nu is also uh, around 0. So the deviation is small, indeed. Okay, so it means the unformulation is respected. But if we look at the pion induced data, like uh, the pion hit the uh, tungsten, then you can see the, the sum deviation here. Okay. In order to show the deviation more clearly, you can look at this part. So you can see the, 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 these data come from the different central mass, uh, uh, central mass energies. So if we can see that uh, this uh, the dash line represents the PQC prediction, you can see the strong deviation okay, from the new. So basically, the problem comes from new. Okay, this is even see a more clear from, from, from this part. And uh, you can see that the deviation could reach minus 0.5, 0.6. Yeah. When the peak is a little bit, QT is around 3. Okay, so why? Okay. Now, then to understand the, this uh, violation, okay, we have to explain, but, uh, we have to understand why we have the lactone violation. In fact, it's, the, it's kind of, it can be explained using this uh, in, in an intuitive uh, in the scale. So in general, okay, we can consider it's a lepton, uh, this a quark and a quark and magnet. And uh, so we have a left hand left hand data magnet into a, a transverse polarized photon minus one. Or we can have a right hand data right hand quark and a quark magnet into the a transverse polarized photon with the spin plus one. So this is the, the most uh, intuitive uh, picture, okay, to describe the. Uh, a Julian process. Then, when the this photon split into electron pairs, the electron pairs intend to uh, align with the photon speed. So that's the reason we have a one plus cosine theta squared. So when theta equal to zero, you have a maximum uh, probability. Okay, so that means that the electron try to uh, align with the, the photon speed. So when you go when you go away from the this uh, photon speed, uh, photon speed, then the, this uh, probability will, will be smaller. So this uh, can be so the one plus cosine theta squared can be understood in, in this way. Yeah. So then, you know, then to have the deviation, we should have this, uh, the, the helicity flip. We, we, in this cross section, we have uh, uh, we couple the left and the right and quark together. This, uh, uh, this diagram exists if the quark is transverse polarized. Because we, we know from quantum mechanics, if a polarized, uh, a transverse polarized quark can be written as a linear combination of the left-handed, uh, left-handed and the right-handed quark. Okay, so and then, so in this, so once it is a quark, it's very polarized, and there's a possibility to couple left-handed and right-handed quark in the in, in this diagram. So then, if we have the transverse polarized quark, that means we have the positive transverse degree freedom to come into play, and the sign term will appear. Okay, I, I just explained. If uh, you have only left-handed or only right-handed uh, quarks, then, the, then you, you, the, the only relevant degree freedom is on the two So you have only cosine theta. But now, if we don't have transverse uh, degree freedom, then you can create a sine theta. And this sine theta will break the formulation. Okay, so the point is, we should have the part of the uh, transverse degree freedom. Now, how to have this? The, I, the, the first idea is that we may imagine that uh, is a uh, it's a vacuum, it's a trivial, so we also call it a vacuum effect. So in some region, okay, there is a quark and that quark and that it, and there is a, a strong quark magnetic field. So once you have this magnetic field, then this anti quark will have a spin parallel to this magnetic field, and the quark will uh, have a spin anti parallel to, to, to this uh, magnetic field. So then we can have the transverse component, or in other words, we have this so called the transverse spin correlation. So, in general, we can have this kind of uh, product. It's a, without a speed of freedom, it's a, the, the, we have the uh, spin correlation here. So, indeed, uh, the, you can show that the, the transverse spin, H11, H22, uh, the transverse spin correlation, the, the coefficient of H11, H22 can give us the violation. You can see that they can calculate this violation. It's proportional to uh, this. Uh, uh, Structure of H1 and H2. So once you have argued this, then the next step is you parameterize because it's a non perturbative effect, so we don't know how to do it, uh, how, how to calculate it. So, so people just parameterize it 
in this form. Okay, then by tuning the parameter, kappa zero and t, then they can fit the data. Okay. This is the first resolution using the vacuum effect. The second resolution is uh, using the so-called ball model function. In order to have a transverse progress quark, uh, another possibility is that we correlate the speed to the transverse momentum. If a particle can carry transverse momentum, then we have, if we have this term, okay, this range, then the spin can correlate to transverse momentum, then we can have a transverse progress quark. Right? So, so it is, uh, then the, the strength of this term is proportional to so called all order function. So, then once you have this argument, again, you can penetrate this all order function. Okay, in this form, then you do a calculation, and you see the, the new well, show the strong uh, deviation with the security. Okay. Then you see that there's, just a, there's a numerator as a power of square and the denominator as a power of force. So when the PD uh, goes to infinity, this deviation will vanish. And this is the, the a prediction from the, uh, this work. Now, now some remarks. Um, first, it's unlikely to, to, to use the vacuum effect to resolve puzzle because uh, this uh, vacuum effect is flavor prime, based from QCD vacuum. So then how to differentiate a pion proton and a proton proton data? Right? Because we say no deviation in proton proton, strong deviation in pion proton. But if uh, this uh, deviation is, uh, occurs through the vacuum effect, then the this effect should appear in both processes. So this uh, vacuum effect is difficult to use this effect to explain the pion. has no speed, and uh, our proton has speed. So uh, but, but once you use the pattern model, you just uh, can see the okay, you have a quark from the pile. It doesn't matter if you from, from which page. Okay, you have a quark coming to annihilate. And then uh, by follow BN uh, proposal, then it's possible because uh, they, they can argue that uh, in the proton proton process, you have quark from one proton and anti quark from an, an, another proton. And the anti quark is a C quark. Okay, in, in, uh, in the proton. But uh, in the pion proton process, uh, the anti quark in the pion is a valence quark. And you, you can argue it. if the C quark is a vanish the PA uh, function, then they can differentiate the pion proton and the proton proton. Okay. So, uh, as, as I said at the beginning of this talk, we started this project through the study of the BD case. So, here I show you the basic feather pion is quite strange. There, there are, here I show you several pieces of data showing the uniqueness of pi. So this is the, um, this is the first part of the B2P So we, this is the uh, data for the B2P ratio. Now the current data is about 1.9 now. Okay, the zero calculation is all constrained from PQCD calculation. And then for the pi, pi zero, rho zero is about two. And then the series is about constant. So this is a six time difference. When well, you have fewer pi, three times. If there's no pi, they are consistent. So then there will be more pi, strong puzzle. Okay. And also the, the, the so-called big pi puzzle. Yeah, these are two uh, uh, direct CPS images. I expect to have the same sign, zero. But the data show that they are opposite, opposite sign. So people, this, this puzzle has stimulated a lot of uh, discussions, including the, the, the proposals of a new physics or QCD effect. But if it's a new, uh, it's a new physics, then how to understand the big pi, which is dominated by tree contribution? Usually, people argue that new physics will appear through loops, so new physics will appear in the uh, penguin dominant modes. But big pi is a big pi row, a tree dominant mode. Okay. But if it's a QCD effect, then how to differentiate pi pi and the row row? And the, the, the second puzzle comes from the DDK, this so called D2 pi puzzle. So you can see, I quote Hai Yang Chen and uh, Zhang Weijiang's paper, you can see that. The, this is the, the data here. They, they use the so-called topological uh, energy penetration to analyze the D-meso decay. You can see the, the large deviation in, in D2 pi pi. Okay. Even if they include the SU3 signature breaking, this D2 pi pi puzzle persists. All right, the third puzzle, one so-called pion hydro production. So you have the hydro hydro scattering and the producer pion in the final state. And then you measure the PD spectrum of, of the pion. So you can penetrate this uh, spectrum into two terms. One is an ex uh, exponential term, this is a second is a power term. Then there's some uh, free parameters here. And then you fit uh, this uh, formula to the data, the CY data. Okay, if you fit to the KO, the proton data, 
you see the, the spectrum of harmony here by power term, okay, represented by green line. And uh, it's a red line, it's a very small, the red line represents an exponential contribution, which is very small. But if you see the pi of data, the situation is different. At a large PT, yes, it's dominated by, by power term. But go to lower PT, you can see it's dominated by exponential term. So it's on the pile of data. So if I, I, I can show this uh, the, the, uh, difference more clearly use, using this plot. So here the ratio R defines the, the contribution of a power contribution relative to the total contribution. So you see that for the K of the pile uh, data is 100% come from the power, power contribution. And for the pile, the power contribution is a, uh, smaller, 20 to 40 percent. But it's very strange that if you look, look at these two data points, they also have a pile in the final state. But they come from different production process, gamma P or PP, uh, gamma P or gamma gamma. So that means that if uh, you have a few hydrons involved, then the pile production back to normal, again dominated by power pressure, a power contribution. Quite strange. And to and so okay, do you understand the so you you, you review the DBS data and then you try to understand what's going on? And then, okay, the first I want to argue that the, from, from a serious side, we need to apply the KT filtration. Okay, we uh, so present we will introduce this factor serum to you. So basically, we have two factors of serum: one is collinear and another is KT. And uh, usually, we are familiar with collinear filtration because it's a simple. But for the KT filtration, we sometimes we do need it. For example, you want to study small x behavior like BFKL, or you want to study the final state spectrum at low QT, we do need the KT filtration. Uh, because uh, in the low, in the small x, the longitudinal uh, part of uh, uh, momentum is uh, roughly of some order of the transverse momentum. Also, at the low QT, it's a QT roughly of some order of KT. So in these in this two in the kinematic regions, we cannot neglect the part of KT. So we have to keep a part of it in the hard kernel, and the KT uh, is not integrated out. So we need to uh, define, describe the KT distribution in a, in, in, inside the proton, for example. So this reason we have TND, transverse moment dependent on the distribution. So the KT factor is appropriate for studying the low QT spectrum in Julia, the lambda mu nu, because this uh, data measure the uh, low, low QT. And unfortunately, the KT factor is violated. Because uh, the coding has shown that uh, if you uh, the, there's no cancellation between these two groups, so the and then this this, this kind of uh, group change which connect the major one and major two, okay, so the global groups. So the coding has shown that there's no cancellation uh, of the global groups in KD connection. So for so example, you check you compare this Jiayang uh, um, diagram with the with final final QT with this. Uh, the, the diagram considered by the colleagues, you can see the similarity. So you, because of finite QT, so I need a, a, a real part, a real part in the final state. And uh, I can, so they, they can balance the QT between this part and uh, this spectrum pair. And uh, I can consider this a uh, uh, plated rule drawn here. Then you can see the similarity. So if a global group exists in this diagram, certainly it may exist in the, in the general process. So the funny diagram is also clear that uh, why we need uh, more more hadrons because we need one hadron here, second hadron here, okay. Then uh, we need a third hadron here, so totally three hadrons. So these are in a complex QC process. Then you can have global groups. So this explains why the pion production in the gamma p and gamma gamma looks normal yeah. because uh, the the single process a few hadrons. Okay. Now the third step is that uh, I can show that okay we can uh, in a low low QT. We can uh, factorize this global rules into a uh, phase, a phase vector. That's because uh, uh, you have, uh, according to the Feynman rule for the global rules, you have uh, the data function, I data function here. And uh, so, and at the point that uh, in the low QT, I can show that you can, I, uh, I colonize uh, the, uh, this quark uh, propagator here. So I can factorize this global rule. But then, because the, the, the lowest order is an imaginary logarithm, so I exponentially, this imaginary logarithm, I get a phase vector. So, but so this is a plot, I, I, won't, I don't want to show this plot because time limited. And so this is a plot, I argue with why the, the low QT, I can deform the loop of a moment contour away from the global region, and I can have, uh, I can have a common approximation, then I can factorize global rules. So I, I summarize the common feature here. So all the autonomous process 
in many case factors, for example, the end home security in the heavy variable case of the, the low PE spectrum, then all numbers process involve at least the three angels. Okay? So the applied production in the gamma P and the gamma gamma conditions are normal. And uh, the, the above necessary conditions for global divergence to, to appear. And the all numbers that process involve piles. So do we read down the pile? So and I want to say skip these two actually. Uh, these two slides. In these two slides, I want to argue that why pipe is special because pipe is Nabucco so boson. So it's a it's a so it's a kind of a, a real conflict between the Nabucco so boson and also Kipi Bar bound state. Yeah. So the, so the, so from these two slides, I, I, I argue that the pipe is unique. It's, it's unique. So it's possible that the the, the this global wrong effect could be strong on the pipe. Yeah. Then once you we accept that the uniqueness of pi on, and I also show you that we have the factorize the bubble interface factor. And I just and I study all the puzzles, okay, using the same mechanism. So here, for example, in BDK, these are uh, these two contribute to the global bubbles, and uh, I associate uh, this effect factor to the BDK number two. You can see that uh, once I, I can increase this uh, uh, global phase, then uh, originally these two pre uh, the, the prediction. Uh, have the same sign here. Then the once you turn on this double uh, face, then this prediction becomes positive sign and can consistent with the data here. Okay. So in this range, okay. I can do it. Also, also for the D2 pi pi, I can, uh, I, can, I can achieve a similar uh, agreement. For example, once I include this double face, you can see the uh, consistency become uh, better. So now again, I just apply the same uh, trick. Just assign for the general process of time QT, okay, and I assign the, this uh, double phase to the, this diagrams, okay, and do the calculation. And uh, you can see I split this uh, each uh, uh, structure of the, for the uh, angular distribution in the two terms. There's a normal term plus the uh, anomalous term. Anomalous term corresponds to the cosine SE minus 1. So when SE equals to 0, then this anomalous term will disappear. So only you have normal term. So this uh, this uh, describe the, the deviation. So and you just take the, the diagrams uh, and take the this uh, structure function and you take a ratio. Lambda is uh, the first uh, first structure divided by sigma zero. And you can you can check that when x equals zero, you did uh, this coefficient uh, respect the uh, formulation. And here are uh, our uh, result. So for this phase around 1.1, 1.2. Okay, you can see the lambda is around 1, and uh, this is new, it's a strong deviation. Okay, this is a QT dependence. And uh, then the, deviate, uh, then the, 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 the deviation from the deviation is shown here. So basically, you can easily explain data. Okay. So then I can compare our, our solution with the vector effect. Okay, and then the, uh, both approaches uh, rely on the uh, breakdown of, of the factorization, but for different reasons, because uh, uh, the, the, the breakdown of, the, of a KD factorization in our proposal comes from a soft power And the vacuum effect is very bright, but our, because uh, we take advantage of the pile as a number of those, so it's certainly very dependent. And compared to the ball model, uh, model function, and the, the pattern transverse is introduced by the, uh, the real pattern, okay, the real pattern. <coughs> In our proposal. So, but in B, yeah, it's come from intrinsic data. Yeah. And, uh, okay, so then, how then, so at least how to differentiate the BM for number of the nature, we can measure the PD bar uh, during our process. Because in this case, the anti quark from the P bar is a balanced quark. So, uh, we should see the deviation according to the BM, but we should not see the deviation according to the number of the nature. So, and uh, let's check the PD bar data. This, uh, I found uh, this is uh, the only available data from, from CDF. But it measured at a large Q, it measured at a Z pole, and uh, in a huge range of the PT, basically, they're consistent with the formulation. Okay. But certainly, the data are still big, so uh, may not convince enough to discriminate the from the end of the whole world. So, so, uh, so the violation of the formulation, one of them, Pile induced the numbers data. Okay. So, so this, uh, the, this uniqueness of pile in fact appears in other, several um, processes. 
And the Gauss Boulon fact is to the phase factor in case interaction, which could result in several parameters of hazards. And then we propose to measure anti proton, proton carry on to discriminate the PA and the Gauss to measure. And then this uh, measurement can be done uh, GSI or JPAR. And the next target is that we should uh, we want to analyze the pilot picture production. Yeah. So eventually, I want to ask whether the Pyong Wang code will be done.